Okay, listen, there are times every once in a while when we have to stop what we're doing and we have to correct what people think is a mistake. And this is particularly the case now uh, with the last two videos we put up. We have, we've been going through what uh, Thomas has been going through what was the soup or what was the antecedents, what was the precursor to this anti-Trinitarian stance that the Islam took on. Islam is definitely anti-Trinitarian. But to understand why they're anti-Trinitarian, you've got to go back at the history. You've got to go back and look and see what was happening politically. But most important, you've got to go back and see what was happening theologically, which Thomas has done a great job in the last two videos, starting with the second century, third, fourth, fifth, moving right up into the 6th and 7th century. But there have been misconceptions or things that people have brought, thought Thomas said, which in reality he didn't say. So that's why we're going to do this quick video. This is an addendum to try to correct those mistakes. And there are three questions that I'm going to pose to Thomas that have come from many different sources. Quite a few of you have emailed me or you have texted me or some of you even called me. And it's also on the description, I mean, on the comments box, there's quite a few comments where you are concerned by, by uh, of what Thomas was saying, and understandably so, because you think that Thomas was supporting the view of the mainline church, both in the West and the East. So I'm going to ask these questions, Thomas is going to answer them, and we're going to go from there. So here's the first question that came up, Thomas, and that was your reference to Ignatius uh, in the uh, on the material that we did in the second, third, and fourth, you talk about Ignatius in the first century, and the and people think you're saying that he was the precursor or he represented anti-Trinitarianism. Could you answer that question real quickly? Yeah. Um, before I go into this, like something that's probably true for all three of the questions that you're going to ask or that have been asked to you, um, is that um, I have to say, um, it's partially obviously onto me, so I wasn't clear enough in those videos, so I'm sorry for that. Um, it added by the bad audio we had in those recordings, so I can understand how this um, how this view can have come across. Um, now, regarding um, St. Ignatius, I actually, if you go back to the video, I did say that he was not an inter-Trinitarian, so I guess the double negation, the bad audio, and then me putting up the picture led to like to give the wrong impression there. So clearly he was, in my opinion, a Trinitarian. And what I was trying to establish is that we can use his writing sort of to reconstruct the beliefs of those early anti-Trinitarians that started around the end of the first century. Um, so that was my goal right there. Right there, right there. I can see where people yeah. are gonna misconstrue what you just said. Yeah. Not that he himself was taking this, but people could pull out from what he wrote and came up with anti-Trinitarian beliefs. Exactly. So I mean, he himself, we know that he talks about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and so on. So um, while he wouldn't have used the term Trin Trinity, that was something that was established later, it looks to me like he clearly believed in it. Yeah. Um, so I'm not saying that he was an inter-Trinitarian, definitely not. Um, I was just bringing up because he comes from a Syrian background and from his writings, exactly, we can, we can um, extract sort of and, and, and reconstruct um, sort of the, the, the beliefs of the inter-Trinitarians without him being one. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that makes any Just sense. Just to be clear, so people know, does. he died at the beginning of the second century. The, the term Trin yeah. Trinity was actually coined by Tertullian in the end of the second century. So this word would not exactly. have been during his lifetime. The second question that came up uh, was the reference to your Eastern church. And mm -hmm. I assume by the Eastern church, you're talking about the Nestorian church that uh, they, they, they do not have an emphasis on the cross uh, for salvation, that they believe to in a living in a Christ-centric life. Is that what you were saying? I didn't pick that up, but let, if you could respond to that. Yeah. So again, this is definitely not what I was trying to say. Um, if they came across the way, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, what I, the Nestorian Church, which is um, officially called the Church of the East, clearly was Trinitarian. Um, there's, no, there's no question about it. They adopted the Council of Nicaea in 410. So, I mean, that, that should solve the issue. What I was referring to when I was saying that in this Eastern Syrian tradition, that people did not see the cross as the path to salvation, but following Jesus' footsteps, those are not the Church of the East. Those are these anti-Trinitarian Christians who are a minority in the East, who would position themselves against the Church of the East and who saw the Church of the East as their um, ideological enemy, if you will. Okay, and I think you'd use the yeah. word just small groups. These were small groups. By that you mean yeah. 
They were small groups that were in the minority. They did not represent the majority church in the East at that time. Exactly. And, and they, they ex existed basically where the church was weak or where there wasn't an established hierarchy. But wherever there was an established hierarchy, they, they probably, well, they would, yeah, they, we don't think they existed there. The, yeah. the third question that came up had to do with your reference to the Ebionites. And the Ebionites, people believed what you were saying was that the Ebionites, who we know are very heretical, we know that all the early church fathers confronted the Ebionites, uh, but that they heard you sus assume that the Ebionites represented early Palestinian or Palestinian Christianity in contradistinction, say, to Hellenistic uh, Christianity, that they embodied the faith of the early church. Were you saying that? Um, no, again, um, I didn't even go that back that far. Right? So this would have been well within the first century. I'm basically starting at the end of the first century, beginning of the second century. At that point in time, there were Ebionites, but they weren't, um, they weren't the representatives of the early church. They were just uh, one group among, among others, right? So I'm not saying that they came first or they came it's like the, the, the right belief. Um, it's just that by that time that we went like delve into this history. They were they were a factor, and they influenced this this Syrian anti trinitarian group, which we were then focusing on. Um, but but that's you... that's the end of it. So I'm not saying that that that's representative for the early church as such. No, definitely not. Okay, and in fact, I, as I remember, the Ebionites were pretty much defunct by the time Islam really came into being. There were exactly. there. Ebionites... So there were, were there um, so that as far as, this anti-trinitarian as as i know the abionites sort of they, there are people who believe that they exist up until around 700 but even if so others and others to refute that and say no they, they didn't exist by the time anymore but even if they existed by the time they would have been few and far between they were very small individual little little um communities but not like a group that would have been taken seriously um, they were just, they were on their way out, basically, but early on already. So in the fourth century already, they, they weren't a factor anymore. Yeah. Okay. Now, just to, I wanted to get that out of the way because we need to really get into what we are going to, and that is Abdel Malik. Abdel Malik is a main player. He is going to come into, uh, as we've said for so many times, uh, he will come into play, uh, certainly not only with Islam, but uh, his anti-Trinitarian views did come out of a soup, but that soup is not from Ignatius. It's certainly not from the Nestorians, and it's certainly not from the Ebionites, although there may be some who are influenced by the Ebionites later on, where you really are going to come, and we really do want to zero in on Abdel Malik. And that's going to be the next video. This is nothing more than a little addendum, just to clear up these three things. Thanks for your comments, folks. It's good to know that you are reading, that you are watching, and that you do see things. If you do see them, in this case, in all three cases, uh, it's not what Thomas was saying, but we can see how it could be lost in the translation. One last word you want to say before we head out? Um, yeah, I, I just hope we could clear things up. Uh, and I hope nobody um, yeah, it still has the wrong impression after this, because yeah, that's not what I was trying to say. And I'm sorry if it came across that way. Yeah, no, and this is understandable because... <laughs> Uh, there are quite a few people who do not want to be rep misrepresented, especially in Christian terms. And in this case, it, it stands to reason that they did want this clarified. Good. Great for you. Terrific. We'll be seeing you right away once again. And this time we're going to start with Abdelmanik. God bless you. Thomas and Jay, over and out. <laughs>